The story of the gene begins with Gregor Mendel. He was a 19th century monk that had an interest in heredity, or how physical traits are transferred from parents to offspring. Mendel knew that the common garden pea had very unique traits among a population, such as seed color, flower color, and seed shape. So he began cultivating the pea to determine if he could figure out how those physical traits followed from generation to generation. Another reason that Mendel chose the pea is that it grows very quickly, so you can get several generations in a short amount of time. Also, the plant has the ability to self-pollinate, and this is important to get a pure trait to be expressed, but more on that later. Like any good scientific process, Gregor Mendel had a specific question that he was trying to address. That was, how are physical traits passed from parents to offspring? At the time, there were two hypotheses that had been formulated to answer this. Blending inheritance claimed that the traits observed in the mother and father blended together to form the traits of their offspring. As a result, the offspring's traits would be intermediate to the mother's and the father's traits. So if a black sheep and a white sheep mated, this hypothesis would predict that gray sheep would always come out as the offspring. The hypothesis of inheritance of acquired characteristics claim that traits present in parents are modified through use and passed on to the offspring in the modified form. This hypothesis would suggest that the reason giraffes' necks lengthened is because they stretch them and then pass off that trait to their offspring. One of the keys to understanding how specific traits go from parents to offspring in plants is being able to control how they're pollinated. Plants are fertilized when pollen meets up with an egg. If this happens within the same plant, it's said to be self-fertilized. Cross-pollination is when pollen from one plant fertilizes an egg from a different plant. In order to ensure that only the pollen from the plant that you want will fertilize the egg of another plant, you have to remove the male parts of the flower that you're going to fertilize. And that's exactly what Gregor Mendel did. One of the reasons Mendel chose the pea is that it can self-pollinate. The reason this is important is that when you self-pollinate a plant, you get a pure line. That means that if you have a plant with white flowers, it'll always produce offspring with white flowers when mated with another pure line plant with white flowers. This is important because it controls the variation of plates. From those pure lines, Mendel created hybrids from the two different lines. For example, he would mate a pure line of white flowered plants with a pure line of purple flowered plants. And then he followed it for three generations. The pure line generation is known as the P generation, or the parent generation. The first hybrid generation is known as the F1 generation, and the second generation is known as the F2 generation. So let's look at the blending inheritance hypothesis. Mendel thought that if this hypothesis were to be supported, that his experiment would produce these results. If he made it a pure line of round seed plants and a pure line of wrinkled seed plants, he would get an F1 generation of all slightly wrinkled plants and an F2 generation with all slightly wrinkled plants. In other words, if the traits were blended through generations, he expected that the first generation would yield plants that would produce all slightly wrinkled plants, and if he made it those hybrids, he would expect that all of those plants of the F2 generation would also yield slightly wrinkled plants. But that isn't what he found. So he conducted his experiment, and instead of finding the first generation, the F1 generation, producing all slightly wrinkled seeds, they produced all round seeds. But the real genius of Mendel was that he followed this experiment for a second generation. And when he grew out the second generation, the F2 generation, he found that both wrinkled and round seeds were produced. And he also found that round seeds were produced approximately three times more than the wrinkled seeds. Mendel concluded that the blending inheritance hypothesis was not supported with respect to his results. In addition, he inferred that the round seeds were the dominant trait. That's because when a round seeded plant is mated with a wrinkle seeded plant, 
all the offspring produced round seeded plants. He determined that if a dominant allele was present, it would always appear. He also determined that in order for the seeds to be wrinkled, it required two of the same alleles. In this way, wrinkled seeds are recessive. So he predicted that if there were dominant and recessive alleles for each trait, that he would find the ratio of a three of the dominant phenotype to one of the recessive phenotype in the F2 generations for other characteristics as well. And what's interesting is that these results held for many of the different things that he looked at, from seed shape to seed color, pod shape, pod color, and even flower color. All of them had ratios of about three to one. From this experiment, Mendel realized that there was something different than what we see. These days, we know them as genotype and phenotype. Phenotypes are the physical traits that we can observe, like seed shape. Genotypes are the combination of alleles that make up a gene. Each gene is made of two alleles. You get one from your mother and one from your father. And Mendel found that these alleles could be either dominant or recessive. If both alleles are dominant, the genotype for that allele is shown with two capital letters and it's said to be homozygous dominant. If you get a dominant allele from one parent and a recessive allele from the other, you are heterozygous for that trait. However, if you're heterozygous for a trait, you would never know just from looking at it because the dominant genes mask the recessive trait. However, if you have two recessive alleles, you will express that recessive trait. In the peas, this trait was wrinkled seeds. Punnett squares are a tool that we use in order to determine the ratio of what both the genotypes and the phenotypes of the next generation are supposed to be. In order to do this, you must make a box with a cross through it, write the alleles of each gametes on the outside. For the male, you write each allele on the top, and for the female, you write each allele on the left side. And then you just trace the letter of each allele into the corresponding box. For the male alleles, you pull them straight down, and for the female alleles, you pull them to the right. So this is a cross of two heterozygotes, capital R and a lowercase r. So when we cross two heterozygotes, we would expect a fourth of them to be homozygous dominant, capital R, capital R, half of them to be heterozygous, capital R, little r, and a quarter of them to be homozygous recessive, little r, little r. However, since the dominant trait masked the recessive trait in the heterozygotes, the phenotypes would be expected to be three quarters brown seed and one quarter wrinkled seeds. So at this point, I would pause the video and attempt this problem. If you don't know how to do it, I'd go back and review the previous slide. And I'll go over the answers here in just a bit. First, you had to realize what the question was looking for. We're attempting to determine the expected genotype of a cross between two heterozygous organisms, not the phenotype. So if you set up your Punnett square correctly, you would have realized that two of the boxes were capital A, capital A, and two were capital A, little a. So there would be expected to be a two to two ratio of homozygous dominant and heterozygous offspring in the next generation. All right, go ahead and pause it again and try this problem. What is this question asking for? It's asking for the phenotypic ratio of a cross, not the genotypic ratio. So how do we find that? We still create the Punnett square and we find that a quarter of the offspring are expected to be capital A, capital A, half are expected to be capital A, little a, and a quarter expected to be little a, little a. So then you have to be able to determine what is the phenotype from that genotype. I told you that the capital F is the dominant allele and it expresses pink flowers, whereas the little f is the recessive allele and it expresses yellow flowers. So you had to know that both the homozygous dominant and the heterozygous genes would both, both express yellow flowers whereas only the homozygous recessive genes would express the yellow flowers. And so you would end up with three pink flowers and one yellow flower. 
I truly believe Mendel was a glutton for punishment, because not only was he happy in figuring out how a single gene was inherited, he conducted another experiment and tried to predict the ratio would look like for two different genes. Complete insanity. But it was important to figure out how genes are related to each other. There are two distinct possibilities for how the alleles of these two different genes would be transmitted to their offspring. The first possibility was that an allele for seed shape and allele for seed color present in each parent would separate from, the, from another and be transmitted independently. This hypothesis is known as independent assortment and because two alleles would separate and be sorted into gametes independent of each other. The second possibility was that the allele for seed shape and the allele for seed color would be transmitted to gametes together. This hypothesis is known as dependent assortment because the transmission of one allele would depend on the transmission of another. The two hypotheses make very different predictions. If the genes assort independently and combine randomly to form gametes, then the heterozygous parents should produce four different gamete genotypes. The 4x4 Punnett square predicts that nine different genotypes and four different phenotypes would exist. Furthermore, we would expect them to exist in a ratio of 9 to 3 to 3 to 1. On the other hand, if alleles from each parent stay together, then there should be only two phenotypes, yellow round and green wrinkled, present in a ratio of 3 to 1. So what did he find? When he did this, Mendel found four phenotypes with approximately a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. This supported the hypothesis of independent assortment of genes. If the dependent assortment of genes were supported, the F2 generation would have had a 3 to 1 ratio. To sum up all that Mendel found in his life work into one slide is really a challenge, but this is what he found. He found that there are alternate versions of a gene, these became known as alleles, that account for the physical variation in organisms. He also determined that, indeed, organisms get a single allele from each parent. Furthermore, if two alleles differ, that is, the genus heterozygous, then the dominant allele determines the physical appearance. And lastly, he found that the two alleles separate during the formation of gametes. Today, we know this as meiosis. Gregor Mendel was also kind of lucky. He chose an organism that was very clear-cut. If a trait was dominant, it was expressed, and when it was, if it was present. However, this isn't always the case. In some species, certain traits can indeed blend. This is true of, in the color of the four o'clock flowers. If you have two dominant alleles, the flowers come out magenta. If the alleles are both recessive, you end up with a white flower. But if the alleles are heterozygous, they come out pink. This is known as incomplete dominance. If the garden peas would have been like this, we probably wouldn't be talking about Gregor Mendel today.